everybody back to my channel. I hope I could reflect a little bit of the atmosphere from whence these beauties come. Brazil, a little bit of carnival, a little bit of pop of color. And because I have two Lelia Perparatas in bloom, yeah, I wanted to talk about them, as you do, right? They are, they've been open now, um, 10 days, this one 10 days, this one's been open a little bit longer, almost two weeks, but they are about to lose their prime. Some of the petals have already got little marks on them, so maybe I'm catching it a bit too late, but the fragrance is still absolutely phenomenal. So this is my Lelia Purpurata Beckhäuseri, and she smells like lemon sherbet ice cream. So she has very creamy hints and notes in her fragrance. And this one is Lelia Purpurata Verkhäuseri Striata. And she has more of a lemon curd fragrance. It's not as heavy on the cream. A little bit more subtle as well. But I have, these two are my first time bloomers this year. So I wanted to show them a little bit, even though they have been displayed in my Blooms For You videos, I did want to do a little bit of a highlight video for them because I find it quite interesting that even in some countries like Japan they they have specific shows just for Lelia Purpurata. So with these guys there is a manual classification when you see for example Tipo Artesia, Canahuba, Roxo Violeta, everything after the name as in this case Striata. That is referring to what is going on with the petals. So for me, when I saw early days, when I saw just the name Tipo at the end of Lelia Purpurata, I was like, Tipo que? What, what, what Tipo? Did the nursery miss something? Um, is the label incorrect? And then, you know, you do your research and then it, you figure out that it is actually a classification. Tipo just means that it is a common type. <laughs> and that's it. It has no additional exceptional attributes. So this could be my Lelia Purpurata Tipo because it has just a purple lip with no additional attributes. And then the Striata, that classification is based on the petals and sepals, what they do. So there's two distinct classifications. One is about what the petals are doing and one is about what the lip is doing. The Tipo, for example, would be the common type and is declared normal, as in normal with just a normal dark purple lip, but there's no action, no extra accentuation on the petals. The striata here is based on the classifications of what the sepals and petals are doing. You can have, for example, the flamea the, and the vernosa, and these all determine that there are distinct veining colorations on the petals. For me, I would be interested to get a flamea because that would mean that there are colorations on the tips, like flames. And that would be very interesting to cultivate. I'd like to see that. But they're difficult to get here. So, you know, you bide your time and you wait. Then maybe one day one will come up. And then they have different varieties that go even further, like the Ardesia, Carnea, Canhanduba, and the Roxo Violeta, and it goes on and on and on. You can get the Ros Roseliana, the Suave, the Rubra Sanguinea, and all these different kinds of Lelias show different attributes to the blooms and the color of the lips. So the Sanguinea, for example, would be a little bit more on the burgundy blood red coloration in the throat. The varieties are astonishing and some people only, only dedicate themselves to breeding Lelia purpuratus. And I can understand why. I have looked up a few more varieties. I can't find them here in Europe. So Verkhäuserie, I always thought Verkhäuserie because I always saw labels with double eyes. Uh, I've done my homework and I'm trying to get used to now saying Verkhäuserie because that is correct. But this would be the Verkhäuserie because of the dark grayish, like lavender lip. The Aurea being like, you know, golden striations. Other than that, nothing happening in the lip. So there's a ton of variety. So no wonder people have gone and specialized on them for 
just shows on Lelia Purpurata. I mean, what a sight that must be. From what I gather, mainly Japan is completely aficionado. But being the national bloom of Brazil, I'm sure that there's a lot of people just dedicated to the cultivation of Lelia Purpurata. So let's have a look. I've got them in just Leca and self-watering. And in regards to how I care for them, basically, you see my microfiber there. Basically, out in nature, they don't like to get too dry too long. They should be kept evenly moist, even while they're resting. But you see, my resting is a bit different here because of my setup. I never let the leka dry out completely. I let the reservoir dry out because that to me is like giving it not constant water, but my microfiber never goes dry. But you see, resting normally would mean that after blooming, you would stop with the fertilizer. But I have a new growth coming, so I'm not going to rest her. I'm going to listen and see what she does. And that's how I will continue treating her. I'm going to continue fertilizing, continue watering. So there is no resting going on with this one once she's done. With my Werkhäuseriei, there are absolutely no new growths coming. So this one will get a rest like just RO water. There'll be no fertilizer or anything like that. And I will only fill the reservoir up like uh, to half its capacity. And that's it. Let the reservoir dry out. Don't let the microfiber dry out. And when she then decides and shows me that there's a new growth coming, that is when I will start with the fertilizer again. So basically they live outside for eight months of the year. When the temperatures outside are a steady 12, 13 degrees Celsius, then I bring them outside permanently also overnight. During the winter, I bring them in and out depending on temperature. If it is a nice sunny day, which we have a lot of in our winters, and anything, I mean, our days never go below 13. I will bring them outside every morning and then take them in at night if the night temperatures were to drop. I have to take into consideration that my temperatures outside might say 13 or 12 degrees Celsius, but my setup, these Leca pebbles have a cooling effect. So I do take that into consideration based on where they are located and they are in my prime real estate area which is pretty protected. And if at night, for example, it says I'm going to get 13 degrees, that area will always be at two degrees above what the outside regular temperatures would say. And then I put the curtains down and that protects them even more. So this saves me the trouble of taking them in and out all these months. But there are days that we just have gloomy, gloomy days and I don't want to stop their light source. So I have them then inside under the blurple lights because that is just for me that, uh, to tide them over. They, and they're quite tall, so they have to be on the top shelf. So that's how I, I manage to tide them over in the winter. I give them the maximum light they can get. You can see by these leaves here how pale they are. I had a comment about my pseudobulbs being so yellow and I I would actually say, yeah, I'm, I'm close to going too far, not burning them, but you can see how pale and yellowy they are. And I'm giving them as much light as they can take. Now, not so much because they're in my blooming alley and I want to enjoy them. This one seems to be a little bit more resistant here. You can see how yellow everything is, but she is a bit more resistant. So the leaves are still doing wonderful. And I'm really, really pleased about this new growth. It's got all the hallmarks of being another blooming growth. I hope I didn't stumble my way through this. I get a little bit uh, distracted when I try to film blooms because instead of focusing on what I'm saying, I'm focusing on them. Something I have to practice and improve on. If you have these, let me know what climate you're in. Let me know if you're growing them organically, inorganically or mounted because Clearly these are epiphytes, some are even lithophytes. They do grow in trees or on rocks. Which ones do what? I have no idea. So I give them the rock version simply because I prefer that. Uh, yeah, if you have them, let me know how you grow them. I would love to have a comparison 
And uh, especially when it comes to the fragrance, we all have different notes or how we perceive a fragrance. So mine, my Verkäuseri is ice cream, lemon sherbet ice cream. And my Striata is more on the lemon curd side, a little bit milder, but they're very, very gorgeous. I'm very happy to have them. I wouldn't mind having more if space were not an issue. Any questions on any subject that I didn't cover? I appreciate you leave them in the comments below. However, much more appreciated is your company. The fact that you stop by and watch this video and let me indulge in my beautiful, pretty blooms before they fade. Except for this one. This one is now permanently on accessories and apparel. I featured this one. I did not feature this one, even though it has the lines. I wanted to get something that was a little bit more uniform, but I do have the images. If this is somebody's preference, let me know and I can work around it. But that was not the point of this video. So thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next video and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Bye.